show. The Western Conference playoff race gets messier, and we debate which team is most being slept on. Up down on the end of Harden's 30-point streak, Doc saluting Dirk, and Cousins getting teed up for throwing a shoe. And the Spurs are at risk of missing the postseason for the first time in 21 years. It's Tuesday, February 26th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number 7, and Tennessee Honey. I'm J.E. Skeets, alongside me as always, Tass Mellis. We got the Ozzy Lee Ellison over yonder. Well, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! Trey, what's hot? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, LeBron James might be in the middle of a playoff push, but he's still got time to get in the studio with two chains, as we found out last night from Mr. Chains himself, <laughs> who dropped this promo clip for his next record rap or go to the league where LeBron is helping out with a song the night before he sat out against the Warriors for load management. <laughs> No word yet on if LeBron will appear on the 2 Chains record, but we've heard him rap before, so it wouldn't be totally surprising to hear him spit some hot bars. And that's where you come in. We want you to hop on Twitter and write us your best rap verse for LeBron James. For instance, maybe he starts calling himself Three Rings and riffs on one of my favorite 2 Chains lines. My fist deserves a shout out. I'm like, what up, fist? <laughs> but we want to hear from you. So let us know on Twitter what's your best LeBron James rap line. Send them to us at hashtag the starters. We'll go into Cypher a little bit later. All right, yeah, get your tweets, get your bars in on tonight's show. We got a fun one. We got the up down report. We got fill in the blank. We got a very solid play. But we start by checking the polls. This is the segment where we ask you, the loyal starters fan, to vote on some of the day's biggest NBA questions. So let's turn it over to the poll master himself. Trey Kirby, TK. The Western Conference playoff race is fight like a tiger, with four and a half games separating sixth and 11th place. So we asked the fans which of the West lottery teams that are still in the hunt they hope make the playoffs. The Kings, the Wolves, or the Lakers, and y'all, it's a blowout. 65% of fans wow. want to see the Kings in the playoffs. Last time they made it, Sean Paul, Dem Franchise Boys, and Bubba Sparks had top 10 hits, so I am with this vote. Wow, okay, yeah, and we're just picking those teams that are currently out of the playoffs right now. Clippers and Spurs are hanging on, of mm. course, but of those three, 65% picked the Kings. Anyone surprised by that, or do you agree with that selection? It's hard to be mad at, at that selection. Yeah. Everybody is very pumped for the young Kings yep. to be there. They're the only ones out of those three teams that have exceeded expectations, clearly. The Wolves have not, right. and the Lakers have not. But I'm sort of in the Wolves' corner because they've gone through so much adversity this season. The Jimmy Butler drama to start. They let go of Tom Thibodeau. They had all that drama. Then, you know, they've got the youngest coach in the league in Ryan Saunders, which is another issue to deal a with. A lot of it's self-inflicted. Yeah, that's, no, the, that's the one problem with the Wolves. And I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they made that bed. They that, the line that's up. totally true, but... Also, some other adversity this week. Yeah. Carl Anthony Towns gets in a car accident. He comes back. He looks fantastic. I think it's clear that they've got a better lead guy in Carl Anthony Towns than the Kings do. And they've got the experience of being there last year. I think the Kings will roll in there. A lot of bright lights will probably get rolled. Likely the Wolves will as well, but I'm just sort of with the Kings. It's a big turnaround the Wolves for the point. Kings franchise, though, because they've been a joke for quite a few years. For sure. And they overlooked Luka Doncic in this year's draft and have kind of been mocked for that as well. But Marvin Bagley's been really good. But De'Aaron Fox is the real story for this team. He's really come along this season. He's fun to watch. He's exciting. He's really good. And they're getting wins from it. And so this is you're starting to see some progress from all those years in the doldrums the Kings had. They're actually now a team on the rise. They may not make it, but you feel that in the next couple of years they will get better and they'll continue to thrive if they keep this sort of core young group together. They added Harrison, Harrison Barnes, so they've got that veteran which they need as well to sort of help them get in and navigate these last few games. But it's a good story, and I can see why the, the general NBA public wants to see the Kings yeah. finally have some success. Right. Aren't the Kings of this year sort of the Wolves of last year? Yeah. Where they're trying to end that playoff drought mm. and they look like you've got some young talent, you're sort of rooting for them, even if they do get in. They've put up a good fight, we should point out too, against the Warriors. So if you got a 1-8 matchup, you at least might get some close games. I mean, no yeah. one would pick the Kings to beat the Warriors. I get that, but hey, yeah, we'd have some, some, some very quick, high-scoring games. Could be entertaining, and then maybe they steal one. Um, but just to get those reps for young guys like Fox and Buddy Hill and Willie Cauley-Stein and so on. Mar Marvin Bagley got the start last night. That would be good. No one, or, or very, very uh, few people picking the Lakers here after another 
unbelievably disappointing loss to the Grizzlies. They, 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 ones that we look at and go, oh, that should be a gimme. They keep dropping, and the defense brutal once again. It, to the, I mean, the Grizzlies, Joakim Noah looking, I was going to say like old Joakim Noah, yeah. but I can't even remember a time where he was looking that great, just going <laughs> to the rim at will. I mean, that's a, this was an, another embarrassing loss for the Lakers, so I'm not surprised that people are not all that high on, on them getting in there, even if they are led by LeBron. People are tired about talking of about the Lakers. Yeah. You see our comments in, in our comment sections. I've had enough of this team. Yeah. Talk about <laughs> other teams. Yeah. And to watch this team not guard the paint whatsoever is a little bit tough. Not mm-hmm. to not to care enough or know where each other is going to be to allow Joakim Noah. All respect to Joakim. Mm-hmm. He's not young anymore. He should not be hobbling in there and right. getting dunks. That should just not but happen. But LeBron brought that out of Joakim because they've had a quite a rivalry over the years. And I think Noah got up for it. He was like, I want to try to get this guy, uh, beat the Lakers while they're down. And he was awesome. I mean, that's the sort of guy that the, the Grizzlies are hoping to get. That's the guy the Knicks were hoping to get out of Joakim. No, he can't do it every night anymore. But these players, they get up for these sorts of games. And uh, We're watching a play here where the Lakers just are not on the yeah. same page whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, and that's the problem. There's no sort of defensive commitment by anybody down there. And also, I mean, you've got the 36-year-old Tyson Chandler as your big. I mean, he he can't. He's a former defensive player of the year, but he can't do it like he used to. So, and I think as well, people just know the Lakers have had enough success over the years. They don't. They, they'll be back at some point. The Lakers haven't made the playoffs in five or six yeah, years but themselves. I, mean, I'm talking I know like the championships. Yeah. I get all that. All right, Trey. What's our next one? All right. Not every team can make the playoffs, especially those that don't want to. So we asked the fans, which of the bottom four teams in the league most needs the number one pick? The Suns, Knicks, Cavs, or Bulls, guys? I hate to tell you this, they blew it. Oh. 53% wow. of people think the Knicks need the number one pick? The <laughs> well, Knicks! I mean, they all need the number one pick. These are all bad teams. I think what people did, though, they looked at this, they go, well, the Suns had, the Suns won the pick last year. I mean, they had DeAndre Eaton. The Cavs, they've won it three times this decade, right? Multiple times. So it really comes down sort of, I think, what most people are looking at, maybe to the Bulls or the Knicks. And, and I'm a little shocked by how, how, how high the Knicks are, getting over 50% of the vote. But, you know, they're a big market. They don't now even really have truly a star after trading Porzingis, so it makes sense like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe there's a Zion Williamson uh, for the for the taking there at number one if he declares to the draft. So yeah, I guess it's not all that shocking. It comes down to those two teams to me. I think the Knicks are most deserving, and it's a rare opportunity to say that with a straight face, but I think the Knicks are deserving of the number one pick. They haven't had top picks very much in their recent history. They haven't had number one pick since Patrick Ewing in yep. 85, then they had a top five pick, Kenny Walker the next year. Since then, they've only had one top five pick. That's 30-plus years. Traded and they them. traded him. And they traded him. Yeah, nothing. Chris Stapps, yeah. Porzingis, yeah. And they hit a home run with the pick, and then they haven't made a great mm. trade since. So let's give them one. First time in 34 years, they got Derek Rose with the Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. The good news is it. whoever gets it, they can't mess right. it up. They can't mess it up. You're taking Zion Williamson. Don't even think about you're not, it. You're not even thinking about no, the knee at no, all. Nothing at all. Okay. It's like, yeah. just take him because he's got the star power. He's a star player. And that's who the fans want. No one wants to go, well, maybe we would take this guy just in case Zion doesn't work out. Take him, and everyone's going to be happy until it doesn't work out. Okay. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> all right, final one here, Trey. Everybody's always asking us to show love to their team, but no matter how hard we try, we can't cover everything all the time. So as we near the playoffs, just a... Uh, quarter of the season left, we asked the fans, which team is the most slept on? Is it the Pacers, the Pistons, the Nuggets, second in the Western Conference, or is it the Trailblazers? Guys, this was our closest poll today. 46% of our fans say the Denver Nuggets are the most wow. slept on team. You guys agree? I, I think they're right, uh, because this version of the Nuggets hasn't been to the playoffs before. Paul Millsap obviously has, but the big stars like uh, uh, Nikola Jokic and Gary Harris and Jamal Murray, those guys have never been there. And this is the sort of team that those teams we talked about going seventh and eighth, they want to finish second because you know if you can steal one of those first two games off the Nuggets, you're a chance. They're a better road team than they have been, but they're still not a great road yeah. team. Their strength is obviously they get at home and they're very, very hard to beat. So I think everyone's probably looking at the Nuggets and going, it's a completely different story when you get to the playoffs to have to play and to win and to live up to expectations. Going in as a number two seed, you're expected to win, certainly your first round. And I think that's the team that those others would like to play and just see if they can maybe, uh, this might be that they might be a bit nervous in their first real go in the playoffs. We picked four good teams here. They're all being yeah. slept on to some degree, but the, the Pistons haven't been consistent all season. The Pacers, their ceiling probably isn't all that high with Victor Oladipo out of the lineup. What they're doing is very admirable without yeah. him in the lineup. That being said, 
if they get a first round matchup that's favorable for them, they can win a series. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for sure. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be all that far. And, and, and the Denver Nuggets, I, I do agree, they could go far. Right. And the Portland Trailblazers are sort of the same way in the in the Pistons to some degree in that they haven't been extremely consistent. And it's just a wait and see with this team. They've lost 10 straight playoff games. you got to show it in the playoffs. Right, they that's what it comes to down do. to. Yeah, right? Don't people especially look at last year's sweep to the Pelicans with Lillard and McCollum still leading the way and they just got completely shut down. Mm. And you go, well, yeah, let's just see them get in there, who they play it, match up against, and see if they can do anything. I do think it's the Nuggets or the Blazers, though, because of what you guys are saying. They still feel, again, matchups are going to come into play, but they could go the furthest yeah. in the Western Conference, you know, if, if the series worked their way. So let's hear from you guys, though. You agree with those polls. Hopefully you voted. we got lots more to come on the show tonight. When we come back, we'll discuss Cousins' weird shoe tech as well as the Hawks' ending hardened scoring streak. Don't go anywhere. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number 7 and Tennessee Honey. We are into the up-down report. Let's do this. First up, James Harden's historic run of consecutive games with at least 30 points ended last night versus the Hawks. Kick off. The Beard came up just short, finished with 28 points, had a rough shooting night, missed all 10 of his three-point attempts. Harden's 32-game run of games with 30 or more points was the second longest in NBA history. But guys, I want to know, are you up or down on Harden's 30-point streak finally being snapped, coming to an end. Are you tired of it? Yes, no, and no, I guess. I'm not happy that it ended because it really made the MVP race exciting. I think Giannis is going to win MVP. People now are kind of realizing that he's been the leader for a long time. So when James Harden was on his streak, averaging 41 points a game over 32 games, he was a legit contender. The Rockets went from being pretty bad to climbing up the Western standings. He was having highlights all kinds of every single night. You know, and just really putting his stamp on the season. Nobody expected him to be able to win two MVPs in a row. Mm. But it kind of seemed like he was going to maybe when he was on the streak. Now, if he doesn't have it going for the whole season, mm. perhaps that changes. What happens now with Daryl Morey's beard? Because doesn't he have he's to shave? He's got to shave. shave. Yeah, he's got to shave that. Off. So we're going to lose that beard mm -hmm. as well. But, uh, no, it's one of those <laughs> silly things, you know, that you look back on the season and think that was an incredible run. And we might not ever see that again, certainly, you know, for the next 20 or 25 years for someone to go that awesome. long. So it's a good streak. But I think he kind of wanted it to end as well. You think so? You know, yeah, the way at the end there. I don't know. He's getting quadrupled. Yeah, the Hawks <laughs> yeah, four guys. I think, I think part of him was like, you know what, end it. So then we don't have to talk about it. And we can actually now focus on trying to make the playoffs. I think this is good for them as a team. Because it means Chris Paul is around. It means that other guys are contributing. And we just want no <laughs> excuses for James Harden to falter in the postseason. We want him as fresh as possible yep. come the second round or the third round. Also, uh, James Harden knew of this streak. Uh, as he said, he said, I was never going to get number one. I was never going to catch Will Chamberlain. So what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even halfway there. You're absolutely right. All right, next one here. This one's weird, guys. Last night in Charlotte, Warrior center DeMarcus Cousins got hit with a technical foul in the fourth quarter for tossing a shoe off the court. He was at the free throw line, he threw it into the crowd, but he got the tech. Now the NBA did rescind this technical today, but I want to know, are you up or down on Cousins getting that technical in the first place for just throwing a shoe? Down. Yeah. Down. Down. <laughs> Trey oh. goes up. You cannot throw shoes. Yeah. I've always said it. Just gently place them wherever they need to be. No, of course, I'm down on this. It shouldn't yeah. have been a tech. That's why it was rescinded today. But it was funny to see it happen to, of all people, DeMarcus Cousins. They'll give him a tech for anything. Yeah. That's right. That's why he got a tech foul, because he's DeMarcus Cousins here. But he you're, saying if, you're saying if that's Steph Curry He doesn't get a tech, especially the not in Charlotte. No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> and it's always the referee on the other side of the floor oh, making yeah. the call. He's, there's two referees on that side. They don't see a thing. Mm. They deem it's okay. Aaron <laughs> Landis has weird. a seat. He's like, I mean, it, in all honesty, though, if like if the rule is okay, you're not supposed to throw the opponent's shoe. I get that. That's the rule. But there should be a stoppage of play here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is yeah, dangerous exactly, that it's yeah. sitting there. That's what Cousin said. I didn't want someone to roll an ankle. I didn't want myself to roll an ankle or something stepping on it. He's so, having flashbacks of his Achilles injury. Sure. Yeah. He didn't step on anything, but yeah. But if you can't pick it up, then okay, tweet, stop play, and like, mm -hmm. let's get it out of here. It seems like common sense to me. All right, Safe, final one. Safety. Come yeah. on now. That was my weird whistle there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool moment in L.A. last night. Clippers coach Doc Rivers brought a sellout crowd to its feet to honor Dirk Nowitzki. About nine seconds left in his team's win over Dallas. Doc called the timeout. He grabbed the PA microphone, and he led what remained of the Staples Center crowd in a bit of a tribute there to the Mavs legend. 
You guys up or down on Doc's going down. Dirk tribute? <laughs> I mean, Dirk gave it a thumbs up. How yeah. can you not? Well, you could go down. Dirk has not yet said he's retiring. <laughs> yes, but I think this is the basketball world telling Dirk this is it, the oh, end of this well, season. That's, you know? I mean, is that well, cool? That case, I'm down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let Dirk decide that. No, you guys are all up on it. You like this moment. Yeah, it was super cool. Even, you know, fans, execs, players were saying they had never seen anything like this for an opponent to have a coach get on the mic and be like, hey, give this guy some love. Yeah. Really cool. The doc said that he regretted the way he didn't do it for Dwayne Wade earlier this mm -hmm. season. I don't remember that moment whatsoever. Maybe because they didn't do sure. anything, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he made up for it. That, that was very, very cool. Let's see, hear from you guys on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. Thumbs up or thumbs down on all those. Quick break, but when we come back, We'll discuss the Spurs playoff chances and Trey Young's career night. Go boy. Back with the starters, time for some fill in the blank fun. Trey. The Hawks lost to the Rockets last night, but somebody called Quavo because Trey Young ice trained the game. Woo! Going for a career high 36 points while banging home some deep threes and adding eight assists for good measure. Need you guys to fill in the blank. Trey Young's performance was blank. Curry esque, I'm mm. going with, because of the distance that he was letting those threes go. He was bombing away in this game. And there was a stretch there in the fourth quarter. He was just trying to keep the Hawks in it. He was coming down, pulling up from 27, 28, 29, 30 feet, and just splashing it. He was feeling it. Career night, you said 36. Also, a career high eight three pointers made. I like the eight assists as well. That, that was a great, great game. And he's been doing this over the last little stretch here. Yep. I know he started the season slow. He's really picked it up. I think he's going to get the odd vote or two for Rookie of the Year. I don't think yeah. he's going to win it. I think Luka will still run away with it, but he might get uh, you know a couple first place votes, and deservedly so. We knew coming into the season he was capable of these sort of nights. Like, he could come out the next night and go Ofra oh, quite easily. Mm -hmm. As a rookie, a smaller guy as well, but I thought I went Trey BM because he was just really feeling it last night, and he kept his team in it, but also he wasn't just bombing away without thinking about anyone else. You mentioned the assists yeah. there with John Collins. They've got great chemistry already. Over 100, and, 100 assists from Trey to John Collins, which is like 14th in the league. So they're really starting to build something good there. Thanks to John Schumann for that stat, by the way. Uh, but overall, I mean, this if you're a Hawks fan, you know, they passed on Luka Doncic. I traded for him, of course. But you've got to feel good that Trey Young is actually starting to show signs yeah. that he's more than just a, just a gunner. He's got a, a good game to him. And the way that he played, he either hit a three-pointer or he was in the paint. Yeah, that's the real, floaters going Exactly. Down. That's yeah. the real modern-day sort of way of scoring in the league. And it was odd to see him shoot from this deep. He likes to shoot from deep. He likes to have that sort of room, but it was strange to see him get these. Look at look at that shot. Look at that. I mean, no mid range at all. Yeah. Which is that's well, the yeah, way no, the game no is. No three point range. I mean, there was really from the four point range. Yeah. It was, it was really the three plus shot that he was banging home. He was getting a lot of space out there. It was Curry esque. It was Buddy healed. Vivek Ranadive esque. You know, there, it was just way up there. <laughs> Great, next one. Vivek Ranadive seriously got a deep ball, guys. Another <laughs> loss for the Spurs last night, however. They've now dropped seven of their last eight while falling to eighth in the Western Conference. They've been one of the worst defenses in the league in the year 2019, but they also haven't missed the playoffs since before I started high school. <laughs> guys, fill in the blank. The Spurs playoff chances are blank. I'm going very high. You're going good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Here's why. It, this could come down to tiebreakers. And the Spurs right now, they took three out of four games against the Lakers and the Wolves. So they're going to have those tiebreakers if they come into play. The Clippers, they split that season series. Now, the Kings have them in, in that regard. But they've, they've split the season series with the Clippers, but they got the better conference record right now. So that's what it would come down to next between those two teams. So I think, again, if they're, they're tied here, 44 wins, 45 wins. I know they're playing horrible right now on that rodeo trip. That's done. They're better at home. I still think they're going to sneak in here, and it could come down to a tiebreaker, I guess, what I'm getting at. I, I think it's it's theirs for the taking because that rodeo trip is done. It didn't end as bad as it seemed. They only gave up 101 points to the Brooklyn Nets. That's not a bad number in today's NBA. They just That's couldn't actually, get a shot. Yeah, that game. They, yeah, they scored 85 themselves. And they're a fantastic home team. They're very, very good. Only a few teams have fewer home losses than the San Antonio Spurs. They've got a real nice schedule. John Schumann told me that as well. The rest of the way, no rest disadvantage the rest of the yep. way. Home heavy. This is theirs to lose. And, 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 you know, they got that terrible road trip out of the way. 
It can't get any worse than that. We thought last year in the same sort of situation, yeah. like they're just going to fall apart. But they just managed to squeeze out these wins. And that's what they do, and that's what they'll do again this year. Trey, our final one. It has been a tough NBA week for Ja Rule. You could even say it's murder. <laughs> First, he was invited to 90s night, even though he's not really a 90s artist. Then his DJ couldn't get his music started. Then he started taking some heat from the Timberwolves. So he hit the tweets, blasting out, you just jinxed yourself talking to the god this way. You're cursed now and Cat is leaving. He followed that up today by tweeting to the Sacramento Kings, you'll never win a championship and Carl Towns is gonna leave you in free agency, to which the Kings responded that Ja Rule's hoop knowledge is worse than his Firefest logistics, to which Ja Rule responded, I bet I throw another festival before the Kings win a championship. Got him? I don't know, fill in the blank. Ja Rule's NBA tweets are... Go ahead, Lee. Blank. Nah, Rule. He's taking a lot of L's right now, <laughs> man. Okay. Uh, he's got to stop tweeting. Just stop tweeting. <laughs> he's getting burned by the Kings. They're destroying him in this. Stop tweeting. No, man. no, no. His tweets are fire, and you can spell it with a Y, <laughs> because here's why. Everyone knows the hottest takes are just straight up factually wrong. <laughs> and when he was talking to the Kings about Carl Anthony Towns going to leave them, I mean, maybe he can see the future. Maybe Towns is going to get on the Kings and then eventually leave. I don't know, but... That's just straight up wrong, man. I don't know. You got to figure out the teams here. You got to look at the rosters. But it's still fire. That was a lot of tweets. There's a lot of words. It was too tweety for me. Okay. Just too much going on. It's too much. <laughs> ah, it's real difficult for my mind to comprehend. I was happier with 140 characters. Were you, uh, were you a Jean Rule fan? <laughs> I mean, I, I was Who fine. Who doesn't love to do Do you have a favorite? We had, favorite? We had, we had hits. You know, we, yeah. it was just, they're catchy. <laughs> they were catchy. I'm sure I had some CD singles that I paid $18.99 for. Yeah, that Come was a on, big not hit. a single. Serious, you remember how much singles yeah. cost on CD? Oh, I'd go down to uh, Video Plus Books Tweet and CDs. Us. Let us know your favorite Jaw Rule B-side. <laughs>is a double header. Players only tonight on TNT. Celtics Raptors getting started at 8 p.m. Eastern followed by the Thunder and Nuggets. That looks awesome. Hopefully these games live up to the hype. All right, we asked you, what's your best LeBron rap line? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, you got some bars. Yeah, some fire bars. Moxley tweets, we all know what I already said. No, I'm inside all these young Lakers heads. Oh! I tried to sell it. I want the brow, so with Kuzma, I will cut the ties. If you don't want to win, you're with the wrong franchise. <laughs> oh! That's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> there we go. And Adam says, we ain't the champs. Don't pop that crystal. Don't need any goggles. Protect my cornea. <laughs> okay, that's a throwback right that's there. That's a throwback. <laughs> Tonight's Damn pick and play. Goggles. Thunder Nuggets. Hashtag Thunder Nuggets. Trey, Tass, and myself like the Nuggets at home. Lee's basically got to take the Thunder on the road. Russ, All right, Russ, get fired up. Uh, yeah, see if you can name all the players in this one here from the Memphis Grizzlies. It's a beauty against the Lakers, but uh, it's a bit of a mishmash of players. Here's Joe Kim Noel finishes. Justin Holiday with layup. Beautiful. That's, That's what nice. I call a very solid play. Guys, we got a wedgie. Woo! I know you may not know what a wedgie is. It's been so long. But number 28 on the season was produced by the Clippers. Yeah, good one. Clean stick right there. It's Garrett Temple. Woo. Woo. Thanks, Garrett. Woo. 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 28. Yeah. Woo. 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 All right. <laughs> Fire up. Uh, drop podcast. It's up. Yeah, we dropped one on a Tuesday. Go get it. Go listen to it. Tweet at us. Hashtag the starters. That's it for us tonight. We will see you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. No fan signs. Oh. Well, there is one in the can. No. In the can. <laughs> Can't wait to see it tomorrow. <laughs> Take it out of that can. Face the night, people!